Do you see yourself in the media you're watching? If you're a person of color, you, the answer may be no. Well, such is the mission of Real 8 and my friend David Liu, who joins us now to talk a little bit about what Real 8 does and how that can possibly improve the images that we're seeing on our screen. Dave, welcome, nice to have you with us. Thanks, Carlos, thanks for having me on. So this is really a novel, a thing that you, you're embarking on. Tell me a little bit about what the genesis of Real 8 was. Yeah, so the genesis came about largely because, as you may recall, I spent a lot of time in corporate America. And then after I retired from my uh, corporate job, I started to do things in the entertainment space. And what I found was that as I spent time with people of color, filmmakers of color, particularly Asian Americans, I found that they had a lot of challenges around raising capital, uh, building a fan base, building excitement around their content, even if they had a successful film or two in their uh, back pocket. And so I started to think about how do I help them amplify their messages of struggle, their messages of challenge, particularly in the existing studio system. And I thought about, well, one way we could potentially do that is by having them tell their stories. And so that ultimately led to the genesis of this Real 8 show that we're launching, where I interview Asian American filmmakers who have had successful films, and they tell their origin story, their uh, stories around struggle, their stories of inspiration, and the projects that they're working on today. And my goal is really just to help them amplify that message. All right, so by amplifying, do you think that the, the message amplification gets to the studio heads who perhaps you become a complete oversight that or may, maybe just completely neglected? I'm not sure that ultimately they're the audience for this content. I think the audience are really people like you and I. Mm -hmm. It's the fans. It's people that listen to these stories and realize that there are artists behind the creation of these amazing pieces of work and they need help and they need support and their struggle is real. Um, you know, what's, what's really interesting, Carlos, is that I think if you don't spend time in the entertainment business and you're just a fan, you think that once a director or producer has a successful film, they're flush with cash and they're flying around in G5s and they got, you know, hangers on and they don't need to worry about money and they just snap their fingers. And you and I both know that that is so far from the reality. There, there are only a few people that frankly have, can command that kind of financing and that kind of support from the studio system. So I think ultimately this is a grassroots effort. It's about helping these filmmakers tell their stories so that the message gets loud and clear to the fans. And then the fans and the people like you and I start to help think about how do we support these filmmakers? How do we help support their projects? I think once we start to see more and more of that, then I think you'll start to see the studios uh, come in line. Because frankly, Carlos, the studios don't really have a huge incentive to necessarily change. And you know, as well as I do, that the studios are largely driven by executives that mm -hmm. aren't people of color. Even today, I think over 90% of all studio executives are frankly Caucasian. They're not people of color. And so it's not that they don't want to support these films. It's just that I don't think they necessarily relate to the films as well as a fan might, particularly if it's a fan of color who sees stories and people that look just like them on the screen. You know, uh, David, that, but the problem is, I think one of the problems I'm gonna say is that the, the methodology of getting from idea to the screen varies so much. There, there is some kind of a formula there, but it, it can vary so much that it's hard to even actually write a book and say, here's how to get your film done, whether you're a person of color or not. It's a, it's a windy, treacherous, a road full of potholes, right? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, my first interview is actually with uh, a Vietnamese American, Asian American director, Bao Tran. And to your point, it took him almost a decade to make The Paper Tigers, which is a fabulous film, 98% on Rotten Tomatoes and still on Netflix. So your audience can check that out. Um, what I will say, however, is that you're absolutely right. Every road is winding. There's lots of different ways to make a film. But what I do know is there are prerequisites. There are things that are necessary in order to even begin your journey. And one of those is money. One of those is financial support. And if you don't have financial support, you're dead on arrival. And part of the reason why the Paper Tigers took 10 years to make was because it took that long for Bao to raise the capital to make that film. So my hope is that by helping amplify 
the stories of struggle and the challenges faced by Asian American filmmakers, as well as other underrepresented uh, people of color, that at least fans will understand better the challenges and maybe come out and support them, not only with their fandom, but also with their wallets. It's interesting that we we make progress and it appears that we see more African-Americans in film, we see more Latinos in film, we see more Asians in film, but it's sporadic. It's there's, there's not a consistent drumbeat there out of Hollywood to make that happen. Yet the marketplace would suggest if it was market driven, that those are the the people that are buying tickets to go to these movies that are buying the subscriptions on Netflix and on Amazon, that they're really uh, that the movie industry is missing the boat. Uh, is Real 8 going to try to amplify the, the big gap there in thinking? We're going to try, although I'm a big believer that every journey begins with one step and you can't change the world overnight. <laughs> and so we are going to not only help Asian American filmmakers tell their stories, but we're also going to help them harness the power of technology. And one of the ways that we're going to do that is we're going to help them monetize some of their existing work. Uh, if you're an Asian American filmmaker or any filmmaker that has a piece of content out there and you're looking for other ways to monetize that content by accessing fans, we will allow you to do that. And one of the ways we're going to do that is we're actually going to harness the power of blockchain and we're going to offer NFT related uh, merchandise and experiences that fans can purchase if they support the specific filmmaker and their specific film that they love. So that's just one way that we hope that we can help bridge this gap, this gap in money, this gap in capital that exists in the market, largely because I think the industry is still quite risk averse. And the reality is that um, there's only going to be so many blockbuster films, and therefore you need to be able to show the studio system, the existing distribution system, that you not only have capital, but you have a market for your film. And I think by using technology, you can show not only that you can raise capital from some of your fans by selling them merchandise and memorabilia, but also that there is an existing base of fans that will go out in droves to watch your content when it's done. Well, this is an honorable undertaking and Beyond TV is proud to be part of that and spreading that good message of Real Aid. And, uh, you know, it's such a great thing that you're doing. And we hope that movie executives get the message, that bankers get the message. Certainly filmmakers have understood what they need. And so this is an interesting compilation of kind of a, a, a movement, we could call it, with Real 8. Yeah, I certainly hope so, Carlos. I mean, I'm hoping that we can actually use technology to help solve a real life problem uh, for artists and uh, people of color and underrepresented communities. And I'm really excited to partner with Beyond TV to help distribute our content out there so people can listen to these stories and understand better the struggles that uh, underrepresented filmmakers have in today's market. Well, we're thrilled to have you. Thank you so much for talking with us today. And it's Real 8, R-E-E-L 8.